I stream in 1080p, but I gotta actually have the game in 1080p and that's fine. Except that it makes all of the names absolutely crazy. <laughs> so I'm in Booty Bay. Sometimes I like leaving the- look how fun this is. So this is what my old um, backdrop used to be. Uh oh. Um, well, good thing I have my heart. Oh my gosh. Only heals you, Pally. What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Nobody has this issue. Only me. I'm just silly, is what it is. My Hearthstone goes directly back to Stormwind. We're gonna be here for like till 9.50. Possibly. But it could be earlier, that's what everyone's saying. While we're waiting, they are the 12 foolproof rules for a fool. It's foolproof rules for a fool. I'm the fool. I'm the one that keeps dying before level freaking 40. I was at 35. I was like 75% of the way through the bar. The dang Scorpion Reaver got me because I was like, oh, I can go ahead and go AFK for five seconds. No, no. <laughs> I am the one that needs this very elaborate, ridiculous rule set here. I don't know if you can even read that. I overshot. <laughs> Screenshot this. So, rule number one. I log out if I go AFK. Almost never truly fully AFK on stream. Even on breaks, I'm usually just sitting here. So I'm not AFK. I got my hands and my hand and mouse on the mouse. Hands on the mouse and keyboard. Goodness. That's rule number one. I'm gonna try to put that up into the sky so you get a little bit of better of a background. There we go, perfect. I have 12 of these. These keep me alive. Always have an exit plan, right? So if I'm going into an area, I want to make sure that at least the way that I'm clearing mobs, I will be able to run out without having to clear mobs Fuck. if something goes down, right? Okay, rule three. No cockiness, no complacency, no carelessness, none of this. Oh, I'm so high level, I don't need to worry about anything anymore. Look at all my armor, look at all my stuff, look at my weapon, I can slay anybody with no problem. That's not what we do here. So that's number three. The add-on rule is I don't trust my life to add-ons. I have a couple of add-ons that really help out. If my health gets too low, it'll start beeping, and if it gets really low, it'll send an alarm and it has red aura all around, so I'm able to know, oh shit, something's going down. I swear a lot, by the way. There's a couple other ones that really help out, like one that tells me if there's like an elite mob or like a high-powered mob nearby, but yeah, none of that. I want to wait to turn in quests until I'm up to five levels over level the quest, but not six or more, because after five, you actually start to get less EXP from the quest. Now you might be asking yourself, why the heck would I not turn in a quest as soon as I could? Why would I go out there as soon as I grab any quest and just kick butt, bring it back in? Group up a friend of you too? Um, it's because I die too often! So I have to take a step back and go, okay, how am I dying? Alright, am I going towards quests that are like overleveled? Maybe. Maybe I am. Maybe I don't do that. Maybe I go ahead and just wait as much as possible to do them. And I'm glad that we have this time to talk because I really want to get through all of the rules. Some exceptions, of course. I want to turn in quests that give good gear or backspace becomes an issue. I need to turn in stuff. Stuff like that, I can turn in. That's not a problem. I need to return to vendor as soon as possible if my bags ever become full. Because it's deadly for me to split my brain power between survival and organization. That's inventory, right? Want to make sure to return to vendor and don't go, oh, this is one copper, I can destroy it, right? And then I can pick something else up for two copper. That's an improvement. Well, yeah, but you're still losing money, so I don't want to do that. So I want to just return to vendor and then we'll come back. If I see any non-elite mobs that have yellow, orange, or red numbers on their level, you see it's red here on the 25. And then if it's lower level, it's like orange until it's my level, which would be yellow. And then it goes green and then gray, right? So those are the levels. If it's something over that, I want to say, okay, let's not move on until I just manually over level by fighting mobs. Oh, and one other mention for the five levels rule. Well, what do I do if I can't turn on my quest? Well, that's why I'm front loading mob slaying, right? So if I have a quest and I am going to turn it in later and I do mob slaying of, of like a lower level mob that's inherently going to be easier and therefore safer for me, then I can go ahead and do those for 10%-ish or 20 depending on how many levels. More XP than I would have if I waited and did those same mobs later or, heaven forbid, I move on to a higher level mob that's harder and therefore not as safe. I just want to get a high level darn character without dying. That's our whole goal here. So yeah, that kind of ties into this too, right? So of course we pause the pause. We pause pausing. <laughs> 
so that we can turn in quests that we are five levels over leveled for, right? So we don't want to stop or stop it unless there's a quest that we have to do that would start to give less XP. Now for specifically the mobs that are two levels below me, they are the easiest mob that have a yellow leveled number. Therefore the safest yellow number mob and it only gives 20% ish less experience than you would if you had fought it at the same level that you are at the level of. I've deemed that to be like the okay number where I go and attack the mob. I don't have to slay anything that's three or more levels below me and I should be wary and scared of mobs that are one level below me and up. <laughs> then we have over level four which is if I see an elite mob it has to be four or more levels below me for me to even consider that I can slay it right and I have to be super familiar with the mob I read the tooltip with the bestiary add-on I'm not gonna trust my life to add-ons yeah I don't fight elite mobs alone if I'm in a group then that's okay and if I have world buffs which I have three more minutes of this one and everybody's here so we know that there is actually gonna be a world buff here that's this one obviously elite mobs scary don't do them unless you're over four levels above them or over three levels four or more if I am trying to avoid a large group of mobs, I know that we'll all aggro each other, or I should know that they're all going to aggro each other. I should imagine that they each have plus one level number for every other mob in the group, because I died because I clipped the edge of a mob group. Four more null pause. That was way too close. Yep. No, 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 no. This is bad. And I was like, well, what am I? freaking doing here so now i'm not going to do that anymore i'm going to go ahead and assume that they just have incredibly crazy big aggravities those guys are they all gonna all right so here's a good example of rule number 10. I need to assume the aggro radiuses are larger by plus one level for every other mob nearby we have these guys are all level 12 right 12 to shoot okay I was trying to calculate what was okay, but I got too close while trying to calculate it. But they're all level 12, right? I'm level 16. I'm four levels above them, and I have a buff on top of it, but that doesn't change the aggro radiuses. So I, I should be able to get to like this close to this guy, maybe here, without him aggroing me. But they're too nearby. So I have to assume that it's level 14, not 12, which is only two levels below me. So in my mind's eye, I'm like, okay, so that means that their aggro radius must be like right here, right? So if I go right here, it'll aggro, right? See? See what I mean? These rules keep me alive. Especially if they're like five or more mobs. Like I just avoid, avoid at all costs. Assume that they're like skull at that point. I want to mark patrol mobs and others to track movements even outside of a party. I'm using this kind of stuff. I have some uh, macros that automatically assign skull, square, moon, and the X of course. It's good for my not the best memory. Last one that I kind of break only when I am, well you'll see today. I'm gonna break this rule, probably, but I might not. I actually might not, because I might hit 13. There we go! And we go and Tarth. And we got our first buff, so now for this buff, and got it. We're good. We're good! Oh, nice! All buffs went out, y'all. Oh, and we got the fort. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you! All right, we got 30 minutes of, 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 of fortification. We have two hours of Spirit of Sandalar, two hours of Rallying Cry of the, not Thunder Slayer, Dragon Slayer. Um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna start